Harry and the Goog by Susie Klein. The Goog. My name is Doug and I'm in third grade. I write about what happens in room 3B. Usually my stories are about my best friend Harry, who likes to do horrible things. I never thought I'd write about Harry's cat. He's the reason Harry and I had our first adventure after school. He's the reason we ended up in places. At South School where we weren't supposed to be. I can't wait to tell you all about it. But first, there are a few things you need to know about Harry's cat. He likes to do horrible things too. His real name is Goodger. Harry calls him the Goog, and once in a while, Googie. I think he looks scary. He has clumps of gray hair that stick together. Harry says that happens when cats get old and can't groom themselves very well. Harry thinks the Goog's hairdo is cool. I feel sorry for the Goog. Last summer, he lost one eye and hurt his leg when he got caught in a dumpster. The lid came right down on him. He was lucky to escape alive. I went with Harry to the animal hospital when the goog was being operated on. I remember Harry made a get well googie. Card in the waiting room. It had a lot of water spots on it because he was crying so much. The vet stitched up the gook's left eye, and he was fine afterwards. He just teetered when he walked or ran. Harry and I tried walking around one day like the gook. We wanted to know what it felt like. It was hard to see with one eye. We didn't like it, so we just limped. Harry takes good care of his cat. He even brushes the Goog's teeth. Goodger has his own toothbrush. It's right next to Harry's in the bathroom. But that's not the only thing that grosses me out. When the Goog is licking himself, sometimes he swallows hair and then coughs it up. I hate hairballs, but they don't bother Harry. He wipes them up off the rug and looks at them closely. Way to go, Goog, he cheers. I have to say, though, I have learned a lot about cats from Harry. He knows the Goog has five toes on his front paws and four toes on his back paws. Harry told me cats can see six times better than people in the dark. He also told me cats have nose prints instead of fingerprints. Harry said that's important for detectives to know. Harry thinks he's a detective sometimes. He even carries a plastic magnifying glass and mini flashlight in his pocket. Well, getting back to my story, I never thought the goo would come to school. Usually, he spends the day with Harry's grandmother. She bakes things in her kitchen and sells them. The Goog likes the smell of food, and the kitchen is a warm place for him. During the winter, he also gets to lick the dirty dishes. But today was different. Harry's grandmother came to South School, and the Goog followed her. What's going on in the library? The library is closed for afternoon. The first part of my story involves a mystery. Our class was just coming back from lunch recess. Miss Mackle was leading us down the hall. Harry and Mary and I were at the end of the line. Look! Mary whispered. There's a sign on the library door. It says it's closed for the rest of the day. Did you see that? I asked. Mrs. Michelson just pulled down the shade on her library door. 
something dollar going on in the library, Mary concluded. I wonder what? Something secret, Harry replied as we stepped into room 3B. We kept whispering while we hung up our winter coats, wool scarves, and caps on the coat track. I wonder when, Mary said. After school, Harry answered, flinging his cap high on the shelf. After school? Mary and I repeated. Yup, Harry explained. I've got the scoop. Other kids gathered around Harry as he spoke in a low voice. My grandmother is coming at 3.15. She told me she was baking a special cake for South School. But she wouldn't tell me why. She also said Doug and I could play checkers in the hall while she served for freshmen in the library. Oh, poo. Mary groaned. I wish I could stay with you. Me too, Ida said. I saw Mr. Cardini sneak into the library earlier today with a rolled up poster, Dexter added. Do you think it's a picture of Elvis? I doubt it, Dex, Ida replied. What's the date today? Mary demanded. February 1st, Solly said. It isn't a holiday. Sid held up a finger. I bet they're having a party for the teachers after school. Or, Zuzu added, a party for one teacher. Harry nodded. Zuzu was the sharp new student who moved to room 3B in December. He and Harry liked to think hard. I bet I know, Mary exclaimed. Some teacher is turning 40 or 50. Mr. Cardini's poster probably says. Over the hill. That's what the sign said for my Aunt Hilda when she turned 40. I like going over the hill, Song Lee said. There's a beautiful view. Before any of us could explain to Song Lee what that meant, Miss Mackle motioned for us to hurry up. Time for math, she called. Harry shrugged. Well, he whispered, Doug and I will give you guys the details tomorrow. Mary got a long face. When the three o'clock bell rang, the only ones smiling were Harry, me, and Miss Mackle. Nobody wanted to go home. Not the kids that ride the bus or the kids that walk. Mary was the last one to say goodbye to us. You'd better tell us every juicy detail tomorrow. Then she gritted her teeth and muttered, some people are so lucky. The goob comes to school. One was feeling lucky. I go to Harry's house every Wednesday to play. But today we got to stay after school for a while. The whole adventure got started when we were sitting on the back steps of South School, just waiting for Harry's grandmother. Our custodian was bending over, putting a doorstop in the door. Hi, Mr. Beausoleil. Harry said. When he stood up, he greeted us. Hi, boys. Hold your nose. I've got some smelly bags of garbage. I held my nose. Harry didn't, of course. He loves horrible smells. Is that leftover fish? Yup. And leftover broccoli. Ew, I moaned. Just as our custodian hauled the garbage out to the dumpster, Harry's grandmother pulled up in her red pickup truck. She parked it in the teacher's parking lot and headed our way. She was wearing a winter sweater and an apron that said AI Cakes. I couldn't keep my eyes off the big white box in her arms. 
It was so huge. That rascal, Harry exclaimed. He's done it again. What? One said. I'll take care of it. Harry snapped. Then he ran to his grandma and gave her a big hug. Hi, Lamb Chop, she said. She flashed a toothy smile, just like Harry does. Hi, Doug. Hi, Grandma Splitter. Let's hurry on in, boys, she replied. AI cakes can't be late. As soon as we got to the library, she told Harry to take out his checkers from his backpack. Have fun in the hallway here, boys. I shouldn't be more than 10 minutes cutting this cake. What's going on? I blurted out. Is someone turning 40? I don't think so, Grandma Spoocher replied. This is no birthday party. Be good, boys. As soon as she went inside the lib, Rari, I looked at Harry. He had quickly lined up two rows of black checkers and two rows of red on the board. I thought you were a detective. How come you didn't ask your grandma any questions? Harry put his nose next to mine. You're on the wrong case, Duggo, he groaned. Let's go. I shrugged as I followed Harry down the hall to the back entrance of the school. Mr. Beausoleil had taken the doorstop away. My grandma didn't bring just a cape to school, Harry groaned. She brought the goop too, only she didn't know it. He was in the truck. In the back, Harry said, opening the door. He hopped a ride. He does it all the time. Why didn't you tell your grandma? She was too busy. I knew I could rescue the goog on my own. I've done it before. As I held the door, Harry stepped outside and looked in one direction only. Yup, he whispered. There he is. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was the goog, sniffing around the dumpster. The lid at the top was still open. He loves fish sticks, Harry grumbled. Stay here and hold the door, Doug. I'll be right back. I watched Harry sneak down the school steps and then tiptoe over to his cat. The goog was looking up at the top of the dumpster and getting ready to leap. His tail was tucked under him. Harry lunged forward and grabbed the goog. Aha! Gotcha, Googie! he exclaimed, holding him tight. Harry scolded his cat all the way back up the school steps. You did it again! You jumped in the back of Grandma's truck. This time you got a free ride to South School. So you thought you'd get a few leftover fish sticks, huh? The goo put his paws on Harry's shoulder. He seemed to be content for the moment. Harry kept bawling him out. Do you want to lose another eye? Huh? Just as Harry stepped inside the school, I let the door close. The slamming noise startled the goog. He leaped out of Harry's arms and raced down the hall. The chase was on. The goog chase. HD, I took off. Harry and our legs motored down the hall. The goog limped as he ran ahead. His ears stuck out like jet wings. Seconds later, all we saw was a gray blur. When he got to the end of the first floor, the goog skidded into a quick turn. His claws made a scratching noise on the shiny wood floors. Screech! 
Then he bolted up the stairs. Doesn't your cat know we're not supposed to run in the halls? I asked. The goop has his own rules, Harry replied. Follow that tail. We raced up the stairs, huffing and puffing. We could barely keep up with that gray ball of fur. When the goop got to the second floor, he picked up more speed. Rev your engines, Doug. Harry said, when we got to the top, pretend we're 747 jets taking off on a runway. Boy, did we fly. As soon as the goo got to the end of the hall, he skidded into another turn. The goo slowed down on the second floor stairs. After he hobbled to the bottom, he finally stopped. Harry and I put the brakes on as we went down after him. Easy, Harry whispered as we looked over the railing. The goo was in the same spot. Easy does it, Duggo. Harry and I crept down the last few steps. We were getting so close. Tiptoe. Tiptoe. Just as Harry reached out for his cat, the goo leaped to the left, then ducked into the last room on the first floor hall. Harry and I stopped at the door. It was a jar. We had never been inside this room before. We can't go in there, Harry. I said, kids are not allowed. It's for teachers. Harry looked me in the eye. We have to. We have no choice. We have to rescue the Goog. Let's go, Doug. Invading the secret room. Slowly, I followed Harry around the door into the secret room. It was the teacher's lounge. Harry quickly closed the door behind us. He wanted to trap his cat. The goop was clawing at the couch. We plopped down next to him. We were pooped. This teacher's lounge has just been painted. I can smell it. Harry said. It's cool, huh? It's off limits. I snapped. We're not supposed to be in here. We're not teachers. Harry put his feet up on the back of the couch. We can lounge in the lounge for a little while. It's a detective's dream. Look around. For two minutes, I bargained. Harry held up two fingers and nodded. Look up there on the blue wall, Doug. There's writing in those three white painted clouds. I can't read cursive very well. You read it. I looked up and read the first quote. It says, life isn't a matter of milestones, but of moments. What's a milestone, Harry? Some kind of rock, I think. My grandma will know. What do the other two clouds say? Harry asked. The puffy one says, a smile is a curve that sets everything straight. I like that one. Then I read the third quote. The biggest cloud says, to the world you might be one person, but to one person you might be the world. Harry beamed. Grandma says I'm her world. Then he added, and her pork chop. I thought it was lamb chop. Same thing. A chop's a chop. We got up and walked over to the two long tables that had plastic tablecloths. On top were three leftover cupcakes. The goo was already on the table, sniffing them. He didn't seem tired at all. 
he still hadn't rested. Harry took out his magnifying glass and looked closely at something on the tablecloth. Salt and pepper? I asked. Sprinkles, Harry observed. Probably fell off those birthday cupcakes. I couldn't resist. I poked one. Man, these cupcakes are hard. The goob wasn't interested in the leftovers either. He jumped off the table, then rubbed up against the snack machine. Harry and I followed the cat and looked behind the glass door. There were lots of little compartments. Each one had a snack sitting in it. Wow, these cost 50 cents, Harry said. Just look at all the different bags of stuff. I named each item. Barbecue potato chips, oatmeal cream cookie, potato. Skins with bacon and cheddar, popcorn, nachos, bite-sized fat-free pretzels, and... Whoa, Harry replied. That's some selection. Those snacks aren't in that food pyramid we study for health. You know the fruit and vegetable group, the dairy group, the meat and poultry group, and the whole grains group, I said. That's a no-brainer, Harry answered. Of course they are. Remember in math we learned that the pointy top of the triangle is called the apex? Well, that's where the snack group is. Right there at the top of the health pyramid. He was rubbing his hands together. I knew what he was thinking. He wished he had 50 cents. Oh, Harry! I thought. The goob walked over to the far corner of the room where there was another door left ajar. Harry and I watched the cat go inside. There must be another little room inside this teacher's lounge, I said. When the cat didn't come out, Harry motioned to me. Time to investigate, Doug. Wait a minute, I said. It says restroom on the door. That's the teacher's bathroom. We can't go in there. Harry didn't hesitate. He went inside. It was deadly, but I did it. I followed Harry. There was the goog on top of the toilet tank, pawing at some flowers in a pot. They're fake, Harry said. If they're fake, I said, how come? It smells like flowers in here. Harry picked up an aerosol can and sprayed it. This is what the teachers use after. Don't say it. I interrupted. Okay, but my grandma just opens our bathroom window. We don't use the spray stuff, Harry added, setting the can back down. Then Harry noticed a little round table with a book on it. Gee, he said. Teachers even read in the bathroom. That's a weird title, I said. Polish your furniture with pantyhose? My grandma would like that book, Harry said. Then he looked up. Hey, no wonder the teachers use a spray. They have a fake window. I looked up at the bathroom wall. There was a big picture window painted on it with a view of boats in the water. How cool is that? It's a scene from Venice, Italy. I said, those are gondolas. I remember reading about them in a book about canals. Harry slapped me five. Way to go. Yeah. And now it's time for us to go, Harry. Two minutes is up. We looked at the goog. 
he was playing with the toilet paper roll. Harry picked him up gently and returned to the lounge. On our way out, I noticed there were a lot of sign-up sheets on the bulletin boards. Harry pointed to one with big. Letters, TGIF, that had the longest list of names. Even Miss Mackles. What does TGIF stand for?